Welcome to part 16 of the lecture on designing organic syntheses. Our subject of today are so-called conjunctive reagents. Conjunctive reagents have, uh, <coughs> well, have to offer two reactivities. For instance, two acceptor reactivities, two times donator reactivity, or one acceptor reactivity and one donator reactivity. For instance, let's have a look at bivalent methylene synthons. So, a methylene unit with twice acceptor reactivity. Well, might be rather easy to find a synthetic equivalent for that. Why not simply dibromomethane? On the other hand, if we have one acceptor and one donator reactivity, our task to find a synthetic equivalent could be a bit more difficult. And what about twice donator reactivity? So imagine we would then, well, add two lithium atoms at that position, well, you are right to be rather suspicious that uh, it's presumably not that easy to synthesize that. So, big question mark here. Well, okay. Therefore, let's have a look at, first, at synthetic equivalents for such a methylene group with twice donator reactivity. Well, lithium twice actually doesn't work, but one lithium and one other metal, as we will see, that is feasible. However, let's uh, start first with, well, simply a sulfone, an aryl sulfone. Could be just phenyl group. Normally it's just a phenyl group. Indeed, this you can first deprotonate with a base, secondly, let that react with an alkyl halide. Let's call it alkyl one, halide, the first one. Third, again, deprotonating. Fourth, another alkyl halide. So, in that case, you will achieve a double alkylation alpha to the sulfone. Well, and you can get rid of that sulfone, for instance, by treating that with lithium in liquid ammonia.
Well, from our uh, organic practice lab for beginners, fourth semester, you know from birch reduction, that which you all have performed, that it is possible to do that, and uh, well, it's not that difficult, but uh, somewhat uh, tedious. Um, we will see another example that, uh, well, um, is closer to our demand of performing something fast and easy. Well, and this is the somewhat better suggestion. A methylene group that is double activated by two sulfone groups. So, <coughs> this is more acidic, of course, and, well, sodium hydride in DMF is a nice base for deprotonating. And you add sodium hydride and DMF in, and, uh, well, can add that in excess. Since sodium hydride, the hydride, is not very nucleophilic, but strongly basic. So, and then you add the first alkyl halide, for instance, this bromoethyl ethyl benzene. Secondly, well, in the third step, you add, for instance, isopropyl bromide. And what you can isolate then, usually nicely crystallizing, is this product. And now, as you will see, well, after getting a 93% yield of that, you can easily reduce both carbon sulfur <coughs> bonds just treating a compound with magnesium in methanol. That's all. Just sufficient This will be the product. It was then isolated in a satisfying yield of 72%. So, as I've already pointed out, having two lithium atoms at one carbon here, that won't work, but Having a combination of lithium species and organotin species, this works rather nicely. So, and uh, here, an example for a natural product synthesis, the antibiotic Well, my carocyte, it's called. From the structure, it reminds us, of 
because of a sugar molecule so let's have a look at the Havel projection so Well, it interacts with enzymes in biologic processes, in biochemical processes, but, uh, well, it has an unusual structure for a sugar since, uh, well, it's just a methylene group here. Okay. So, um, let's analyze this retrosynthetically. Well, clearly we notice we have an acetal here. So, in retrosynthetic analysis, we should cleave that acetal. And then, we simply get to this structure. Now, the idea for synthesizing this molecule then was let's cleave that here and there. Here we have that methylene group and we need double nucleophilicity for attaching or for well, getting that methylene group between those two carbonyl groups. So, retrosynthetic analysis then Simply methoxy group as the leaving group on this side and uh, also on the other side and we need something like that. This is central symphon and here on that side again a methoxy ester of formic acid. And as it turned out, this is a nice synthetic equivalent for this symphon for that combination. Of course, you need protecting groups. You can't start with the alcohols, well, but no problem. Well, then, our starting material is this ester and the diol protected as that acetal with uh, acetone. This is treated with two equivalents of our methylene synthetic, syn, uh, uh, synthetic equivalent THF at minus 78 degrees this will attack as a nucleophile addition elimination process The second equivalent coordinates, coordinates at the carbonyl group, but the nucleophilic center attacks the tin.
So what is the result? This enolate Now we can add at this temperature still minus 78 degrees the formic acid methyl ester slowly increasing the temperature to zero degrees and the ester condensation will take place Well, at first setting free lithium methanolate and this will then deprotonate the beta dicarbonyl compound. Just deprotonating. This is the lithium enolate of that di dicarbonyl compound. So, please compare. Imagine this is protected, you deprotonate here. Yeah, this is the decarbonyl compound. So. Okay. Hydrolysis. will give you that enol in equilibrium with the dicarbonyl compound and now well, this, is, this was uh, um, isolated in 66% yield. And the next step, next step is treating that with sulfuric acid in THF. Bit of water in there. Um, <coughs> this is hydrolyzed and will undergo the cyclizing acetal formation followed, followed by an elimination of the hydroxy group in the hemiacetal. forming <coughs> well, this uh, Peranone system. So, 
what do we have to do to get to our target molecule? Again, let's add that structure. Well, adding two equivalents, for instance, of a methyl grignier, the first one deprotonating the OH group, the second one hopefully adding <coughs> the methyl group, uh, the methyl magnesium halide to that carbonyl group, hopefully uh, with the right stereochemistry, and then finally under acidic conditions you just uh, form the um, <coughs> acetal in the presence of, a methanol, of methanol. Well, essentially, you have um, um <coughs> the yeah, this, this pyranule system, you, you, you know, well, here. you get these THP ethers just treating this uh, dihydropyrane pyrane with an alcohol under acidic conditions to get that acetal. So, the yield of this structure was 75% and then another two steps led to the target molecule. So, <coughs> what about The problem finding a synthetic equivalent for this synthon methylene group with both acceptor and donator reactivity. Well, you know one reagent that is just diazomethane. Diazomethane has a nucleophilic carbon. So with an electrophile you can achieve a bond formation to that carbon leaving that diazonium cation here, well, and this is, of course, an excellent leaving group for a nucleophilic replacement. More general, the next example. Again, cell phones can do this job such a cell phone because the cell phone group itself can be a leaving group if activated with uh, appropriate Lewis acids for instance, aluminum chloride or BF3 ether rate. As we will see in the next example, so, <coughs> here 
Here we have the alkyl halide. And there, a sulfone. We could, of course, have another uh, alkyl or aryl group here. Um, doesn't matter. Deprotonating nucleophilic substitution will lead to this result. And treating this with aluminum chloride in diethyl ether So at, at uh, about zero degrees, will lead us to this structure. The annihilation reaction has taken place. Oh, this, this is simply a Friedel Crafts alkylation. Most interestingly, if we again choose aluminum chloride, but dichloromethane as the solvent, then the aluminum chloride is far more reactive, because here with diethyl ether, that Lewis acid has a Lewis base as solvent presented. Here, this is uh, less Lewis basic. Aluminum chloride remains or, or <coughs> um, still retains its uh, full reactivity. And even at minus 78 degrees, just half an hour reaction time, with a quantitative yield, we will get to this result. So what happened? First, of course, this one is formed, and then a second Friedel Crafts alkylation cyclizing to this position. So, more symphons which ask for appropriate conjunctive synthetic equivalence. A carbonyl group with uh, twice Donator reactivity, well, that's easy. Just the thioacetal of formaldehyde. Deprotonate first, alkylate, deprotonate a second time, alkylate, and somehow with these uh, several reagents are possible, you can uh, get rid of uh, the dithioketal. Now, mixed donator acceptor reactivity. How can we achieve that? with an isonitrile.
and uh, well, as the primary product, you will form then an imine which you can hydrolyze. Even more easy is this one. Twice acceptor reactivity. Well, there are several examples for that, but the most easy one is uh, such a carbonate. Just carbonates in general. A terminal olefin. We want to synthesize and starting we the need of a symphon with uh, double donator reactivity. So here at carbon donator donator reactivity. Well this is the synthetic equivalent which has been suggested again a sulfur. So let's deprotonate once alkylate, deprotonate second time alkylate. So two times base plus alkyl halide. So, and then just treat this with tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. The fluoride will attack the nucleophile, the silicon, and an elimination reaction will take place. Well, yeah, well, okay, we T well, TMS fluoride is formed, and uh, hopefully I'm right with this salt. as the byproduct and of course this olefin as our target molecule. Once again a structure the carbonyl group, donator reactivity here, acceptor reactivity there. Now the synthetic equivalents become somewhat more complicated. Again, that funnel cell phone group. So, okay. Nucleophilic center here, electrophilic center there. Add that epoxide. So, <coughs> a 
donator reactivity and another donator reactivity at this allyl system. So at the allyl system, allylic donator and vinylic donator. Here, the donator reactivity is clear. Why donator reactivity here? Well, OK. Um, this, this is a system that uh, can undergo a Sakurai reac uh, reaction. We, we have talked about that in the lecture of uh, stoichiometric organometallics. double allylic system, donator and acceptor reactivity. Some of you should know what kind of reagent we have as synthetic equivalent. It's this one. Can be activated by palladium catalysis so and uh, we have introduced that in the lecture of uh, about uh, catalytic organometallics under the label trost tmm chemistry TMM is the abbreviation for trimethylene methane. That is TMM. Actually, before Barry Martin Trost started his palladium chemistry, he was very active in the chemistry of making use of sulfones in synthesis. And quite a lot of the chemistry I've shown today is from the lab or was initiated by works of Barry Trost and his co-workers. This one again is easy, twice donator reactivity. Just having the trimethyl silyl group twice. Now, an especially interesting example. Carbonyl group and having acceptor reactivity in both alpha positions. So, if we would start from acetone, we would uh, have to perform a double reactivity umpolung. Here's the nice solution to the problem this is the conjunctive reagent a synthetic equivalent for that symphon meanwhile also called Seebach's conjunctive reagent. Why 
all developed 1984 with his co-worker Paul Knochel. Some of you should know Paul Knochel already from well, the Knochel chemistry we've talked about in uh, <coughs> stoichiometric organometallics. So, well, acceptor reactivity here is clear because this is alpha beta unsaturated minus M functional group. On the other hand, this is also a leaving group. But why could we see that as an equivalent for a carbonyl? group. Well, very simple. We have a nitroalkane like that. We can easily deprotonate here just with Brunstedt base. forming this corresponding an ion treating this with a strong acid and you should do that beyond uh, pH 1 for instance Sulfuric acid, a bit of water present, then kinetically this will be protonated at the oxygen atoms and then simply a hydrolysis of this imine functionality takes place. This reaction is known as the so-called Neef reaction. However, to avoid the various possible competing reactions, there are alternative protocols for the Neve reaction, uh, normally uh, working up under oxidative reaction conditions. For instance, uh, treating this with oxone, you should know that uh, strongly oxidizing agent, yeah, then introducing oxygen here, well, simply oxidizing that, yeah. um, then you of course, finally uh, get also to the ketone. On the other hand, uh, um <coughs> forming nitrogen in higher oxidation states and more uh, stable oxidation, less reactive oxidation states than uh, under simple hydrolysis. So, for making use of Seebach's conjugate reagent, while well, we should uh, have a nice synthesis for that and we should discuss that. Indeed, it's easily synthesized. You start from nitromethane plus two equivalents of formaldehyde base. Well, this is simply called a double nitroaldol reaction. Well, 
Aldrol, Aldrol edition. Seebach and Knochel reported a 75% yield and also to be performed on rather large scale, about 40 grams of that in one pot reaction. Then treating that with uh, pivaluyl chloride we get the 95 percent yield of this bis pivaluyl ester Now we simply need one elimination reaction. Well, sodium acetate seems to be basic enough there. And we get to target reagent. Unfortunately, in about just 45% yield. Well, okay, this step might to be, waits to be improved. Nevertheless, this is a rather straightforward route. Now, examples for reactions with this reagent. Two equivalents of N muffle indole. will produce in better 40% yield this product. Actually, if you treat that one to one, you get uh, well the mono substitution product in more than 90% yield. Well, the, the second step well, <coughs> obviously doesn't work uh, with an optimum. Nevertheless, here we have another structure which has been synthesized by this method. So, here you see Notice that unit which has been introduced with Seebach's reagent. So, this part was added in first, well, to be correct, it's this. That part. Secondly, the first one could be introduced with a butyl cuprate, for instance. This secondly. Third was then the nave reaction. Well, and the first step achieved 77% yield. Second nucleophile intermediary product with 75% yield, the nave 
reaction with 78% yield. In 2010, Sörensen published an interesting application for Seebach's reagent in Organic Letters, 2010, page 2746, for those who want to study that application. Well, again, Seebach's reagent, and now a reagent with two nucleophilic units actually with the starting reagent, this one. These should be phen phenyl groups. So the nucleophilic sanders here well, are protonated. That makes sense because amino ketones are rather sensitive, as you know. But treating that with the base DAPCO and acetonitrile starting at minus 40 degrees and going to room temperature. Well, nicely produced a product. DAPCO is just the base, its structure, you should know. Diaser bicyclo octane. Okay. This is DAPCO. So the DAPCO will deprotonate here, will deprotonate there. Then you have two nucleophilic centers reacting with that system. And well, just make an educated guess what will be the product which has been isolated in a one-step procedure with 83% yield. So, to find the solution, we can do that step by step, but uh, let us just remember the synthon for that we have this synthetic equivalent. It's that. Well, actually, first of all, we have acceptor reactivity here and acceptor reactivity there. Later on, with the Neve reaction, we could form a ketone here. So, but we don't have con the conditions for the Neve reaction. On the other hand, we have a carbonyl group here. nucleophilic nitrogen there and there. This is donator reactivity, donator reactivity. Let's put on the benzyl group. So, and now if we have a look at those two remaining functional groups, alpha to the nitro group, we have donator reactivity, since in basic media we can deprotonate here, and we have at the carbonyl group the acceptor reactivity as natural reactivity. So, a nitro-aldol process would take place. Okay? And if we put that together, then
This is the resulting structure. Okay, and as I said, that works very well. Enough for today. Tomorrow we will discuss various syntheses for an interesting natural product uh, called epibatidine. See you tomorrow.